Hi everyone and welcome back to another new tutorial by Studio IC. Simple coding for designers in Edge Animate part 2. Uh, if you didn't watch part 1 already then I would recommend you to do so because it's a follow up on part 1. And these are all very simple, um, uh, short, basically short tutorials even though they're almost take more than 10 minutes to watch actually. Uh, simple tutorials about simple coding for designers in Edge Animate. Now, first of all, we're going to get rid of the title and we're going to start where we ended our last tutorial. And that was here. As you can see, we created a button. We talked about the different levels in uh, in our project. And that button would affect another symbol here that will drop down. Now, this is basically half an animation. Because if I click on this button again and this rectangle is on the bottom of our project, then you can see that it jumps up and then we can do this again. So it's not very convenient. What you need to do or what you want to have basically is by the time that this rectangle is on the bottom, uh, you want the button to do something else. Not drop down, but go up again right and that's what we're going to do in this tutorial here we go uh, first of all uh, basically you can talk and that makes it a little bit easier for me to explain about uh, two different states a and b when it comes to this rectangle on the right side if it's down on the bottom it is basically b right so we got a and b that talks a little bit more easy about this. And we are working with the Edge Animate timeline to get this animation done, uh, which is very, very cool because, you know, it, it, it combines two worlds, a little bit of coding. Designers and coders are two different types of people, but it combines these things, and that's what we're doing in this tutorials. So what did we do we want? We want by clicking on this button the first time, we want to be able to go from A to B right down but if we are on B we want with the same button we want to click on it and we want to go back to A now how can we do that well there are different methods to do that first of all you can say well, okay we're gonna to go to four seconds and we're gonna change this here to the top and then you basically have an animation which goes which goes from A to B and back to A that's it that would be one way to do this, but I'm not very fond of it because if you use timelines, use it um, uh, in a decent manner. Don't overdo it because if you want to change something in this timeline, that wouldn't work at all, you know, because you have to change the whole timeline. It's very inconvenient, so we're not going to do this. We're going to change this back again, and we're going to work with this timeline. And the beauty of Edge Animate is that we have a play function, but we also have a play in reverse function, which means that you're going to go from B back to A with a simple piece of code. The only thing we need to make sure of that our button can tell where this rectangle is, on what part of the timeline our rectangle is. And we're going to do this with a little variable. Here we go. We're going to go to the action line in our timeline in symbol block right. And we're going to make a variable. Variable up, down, uh, uh, down, no, down. And that's it's boolean, so it has to be zero, right? But that's all we're going to do. Which basically tells uh, our button later on that. Uh, this has a variable which is zero and our button will act upon this will change this into one or a zero or whatever depending on the position in the timeline of this symbol so before we get before it gets too complicated let's go back and let's go to the button here's the button and on the button is the code as i told you not in the button so here we go this is what we have right now and to change all that and to work with this variable we need to make an if else statement if which basically says well if this happens then you have to do this and this and this and if something else happens then you have to do this and this and this so we're going to copy basically our string and we're going to say instead of play we're going to call the variable that we made if up down is equal to zero, we need to do something. And the first thing we need to do, obviously, then is change up down to one. Why is that? Because otherwise, not only it won't work, that would be a very lame excuse, but <laughs> there's more to it than that. Uh, here we go. Then it is going to be one, right? Yep. 
because otherwise it's going to do the same all over again, again and again and again. Here we go. Now, else is the next one. Oh, there, there it is. And basically, we have to copy this one. So here we go. And this should done should be zero right then. Now, a couple of things. First of all, this part of the statement talks about the things that will happen if our rectangle is on the B position. Because immediately after we click on it, our down, up down variable will be one, and that will tell the symbol that it has to play in reverse, which is not coded in yet, so we're gonna do this right now. Play, we have to change play into play into reverse. The sim, always remove the sim. And this one tells us pretty straightforward what happens if our symbol is at the A position and it has to drop down. That's all it does. It has to change the variable and it has to play down. Well, it doesn't change much because it's already on zero, as you already saw in the action line in the symbol. Here we go. See if this works for us. Falls down and goes back up again. Falls down, goes back up again. That's nice and neat. And that's exactly what we want. We can even do this with it in between. I'm not sure if we want that always, but for this tutorial, it's fine with me. Here we go. So very simple with a little variable and an if else statement on our button, we created this and that would make our life so much easier because if we are going to change the length of this, this man here, here we go. That's what we want. Here we go. And everything slows down a bit. So if your client says, well, that animation is not, nah, well, it, it, it's too fast. I can't keep my eye on it. Well, you can make it a little bit slower and doesn't affect anything on your code or whatever. I'm going to jump back to this. See if we can do this. Yeah, that's it. Two seconds. Here we go. Yeah, it falls down nice and neat. And there it goes back again. Okay. That problem is basically solved with this little variable here, the up and down variable, the Boolean variable, which can only be false or true or zero or one, or whatever you want to call it. But it has two statements and that's enough to create this uh, beautiful animation and to make it all complete. Now we have a button here. Let's go back to the stage. We have a button here in symbol three. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. We know that it's symbol three, a beautiful button. And usually on a button there's text. So you can read what the button is all about and what you need to do when you're on that button. Stuff like that. So let's put some text on there. That would be very convenient. Here's the button. This is we're in block left right now. Put some text on it. Would be nice. I call it button. Why not? Nice. So this is the button, right? And we have text on the button. See what it does in the browser. It works fine. Uh, we can click on it. Yeah, that's all well and good. But if we take a closer look, you can see that by the time we get into the real symbol, the text symbol for button, that it doesn't cooperate with us no more. Doesn't work. It's basically a layer over another layer, to put it in designer's terms. You can see that here, this is text 6, that's a layer, and the button is 12. So it's not part of the button, it's on the button, and by being on the button, it'll act like a certain kind of symbol. A text symbol is not a normal symbol. We get to that later on, but it acts like that. And it says, well, you know, I am over the button symbol and I don't care, but I'm not clickable. You never told anyone that I should be clickable. So we should put this button in the button. We should put this text symbol in the button. Copy it and double click on it and put it in there. As you can see, I told you before, even in the previous tutorial, that if you want to add something to that button, if you want to change something to that button, size or text or whatever, you have to be in the button. If you want to code for the button, you have to be on the button. So now we're in the button and we're going to change this text 6 into a different text symbol. A change means we're going to rename it. Text button 1. I think that's very convenient to do it like that. Here we go. Now, see if it works. 
yeah, it'll work, you know, if you scroll over it, it's part of the button, so there's no problem here, you can add it, you can do anything with it, whatever you want, but it is part of the button, so it's not gonna be in the way no more. Now, the beauty of the Edge Animate is that we can also can control the text on this button, the text in this text field, by HTML, by coding it. And that's what we're gonna do right now. We are in block left, and as I told you before, you always code stuff on, not in. So we're gonna go to the action line in block left, and we're gonna make some code here. Uh, where do we wanna code? Well, we wanna code in the button, and we wanna code on the symbol, the text symbol in the button. So we're gonna go for sim, get a symbol, uh, the name of the symbol, uh, yeah, that's the first thing we need to do. We're gonna go to the symbol name. As I can see in the top left corner here is button 12. Button underscore 12. So we're in button 12 right now. And now we need to go to the text symbol. And I told you before, it's not like a regular symbol. So we don't, we, we're gonna approach it a little bit differently. We're gonna get a dollar sign. And then we're gonna then put the name of the text button in there, which was text button underscore one. Here we go, and now we need to make sure that we can put some text in that button. Here we go. HTML. And there we go, and we call him button one. Let's call him button one. Now, basically, this is it, and HTML stands for um, the text that you're going to change here in this button, and that's what we're going to do. But at this moment, there is still text in this button, so that would not work at all. If you ask me, well, it actually does. It overrides the text in the button, which is very, very cool, right? So you don't even have to bother about this. If you want to change this, no problem. The code text always overrules the real text on this button. Uh, for me personally, I think I don't like to like it to have so much text in there. So I, I always change this into something uh, very small. For example, uh, this one here. It shows me that we talk about dynamic text on a button and that I can change it and that's very convenient to me. So I'm, I don't have to worry about, um, uh, well, is this a dynamic button or is it the static button that we just created completely within Edge Animate or is this something that we can approach with HTML code? So here we go. It, it'll do the same thing actually because it overrules the standard text that's in this text symbol. That's very cool, right? Nice. Now, if we can, we can do this, then we should also be able to do something else, in my view. And that is change the text on the button, just as we changed uh, the things that need to, be do, uh, need to be done in the right symbol when the rectangle falls. So, let's see what happens if we're doing things like this, for example, and say up and down. Why not? That should work, right? Here we go, we got, wait a second, we got button and then down and... Well, there are a couple of things that don't really fit or are not very... Not exactly what I want because... Oh yeah, I can see it right now, immediately. By the time you are on A, you want things to go down. Yeah, okay. Let's see what we can do. First of all, uh, button one, this state should be down. Because you have to tell the button, if you don't click on it, because everything you do on this button in, uh, when it comes to the code, if you don't click on it, you have to tell something to the button. So the button has a default name, in this particular case down, because the only thing you can do if you didn't click on the button already is go down. Let the symbol on the right side fall down. So that should be there, and if we do it right now, then this is down, we click on it, and it stays down, and that's not correct, because by the time you click on this one, the only option you have is to get this thing to go up again. Right? You see? Up, down, so that has to change. We, we're gonna go here and say, okay, no, this is down, and this one is up. And now it should make sense. Down, up, down, up. You see, by the time you click on this button, the only thing you can do is go up or go down, depending on where you are. 
That's good. That's good. Now, some another simple thing that's very, very useful and very, very funny and nice for designers especially is that we can change the font, obviously. We got our selection of standard HTML font families here, uh, which have been around as long as HTML is around, in my view, and they are pretty boring. Everybody uses them and everybody uses them and everybody uses them. So Adobe, good friend of ours, provided new font to us. Click on the plus here and you get a library filled with font that you can use in HTML projects. And there's everything in here. It doesn't matter what you're searching for, there's always something there that you like. So I'm gonna go for something narrow, mind, narrow, nah, that's, that's what I like. Ah, this one's cool. Nova Mono. I'm gonna change my font into Nova Mono. See what it does. Wow. Down up down so this will make your project look a little bit more professional and it gives you the opportunity to choose from a variety of different font from the adobe library that you can use for your project free totally free you can do whatever you want with these fonts it'll take some time to get them um, uh, to get to know all these fonts and as you can see here there are uh, quite a lot of font in there that i personally would never use because they're too fancy or they're too childish or they're they're not really typography wonders let's put it that way but there is some good stuff in there there's really some good stuff in there let's do some funky font for a change see what it does how that works out whoa up and down that's cool so that's basically it for this lesson uh for this tutorial i should say um i hope you learned something from it and we're going to continue with these very small easy to understand tutorials for ads animate in the future um for this tutorial goodbye and i hope to see you again soon mm -hmm.